A huge, big, stinky disclaimer before you watch this video. I want you to know, SciJit's server currently only supports Windows and Mac OS devices that are connected to a local network that your iPhone or iPad is also connected to. The reasoning behind that is the way that Bonjour or MDNS, same thing, different names, Apple just likes to name things weird, does not travel through VPNs easily. If anyone has ideas or theories on how we could do that, then we could create a JITStreamer 2.0, but currently it does not seem very feasible since VPNs cannot broadcast MDNS from iOS devices as easily. Again, if anyone has any suggestions or, you know, can figure that out, PR SideJIT server or PR JIT streamer, and I'll be happy to add it in. With that being said, if you do have a Mac or Windows computer, this video is for you. Hello everyone. I wanted to record this video to show the SideJIT server installation process. First, you will have to go to python.org, go to downloads, and you will click on this one if you're on Windows, especially. Download for Windows, you download this, and then we come over here, we open this, and make sure you add it to path, install now, and this will install pip and python, both of the things that we need to install SideJIT server. Bada bing. You can close this, open up a PowerShell, do pip3 install dash dash upgrade side jit server. And this will go through and make sure that side jit server is installed and fully up to date. And to check what version of SideJIT server you're on, you can do SideJIT server dash E. Dash E will show the Pi Mobile Device 3 version as well as the SideJIT server version, which as of recording is 1.1.1. And to get it started, all we have to do is open an admin PowerShell and do SideJIT server. And with it running, as you can see, it has started a Wi-Fi tunnel task. This is my iPhone. And then it goes and starts the actual server. Now, in the shortcut on iOS, you will put this IP, this second one. This one is only available to your computer. Only your computer can read this one. Uh, the whole network can read this one, meaning your phone or iPad can also read this one. Though, your firewall might be on. If this IP still doesn't work, your firewall is probably messing with you, because Windows is great. With that being said, I'm going to show what the shortcut looks like. I have a few automations. So when I open an application, for example, Dolphin iOS will automatically enable JIT for me. My test app Theseus will automatically enable JIT for me. And then in the shortcut, I can even get the whole list of apps that I want to enable JIT on and select from the list. And it will go right ahead and enable JIT. There goes Pojav. And yeah, it's as simple as that. Your first time, though, when you first do it, when you first start up SideJIT server, you will probably want to go into pairing mode. So if we do dash dash help, this will give us all our options. You can do dash Y, and this will loop and wait until it sees a device connected to USB. And if I can get it connected, I shall show what this looks like. There it goes. It's asking to pair. 
we're going to hit trust. We're going to type in our password. And then it's going to ask if we want to continue. What this means, we can hit no, which means SideJet server will not start. Or we can hit Y, which means SideJet server will start. And SideJet server starts right up, finds my phone, and then starts the actual server. And currently, when you restart the server, it'll re-enable JIT on apps. But when you reopen the app, it'll say JIT is already enabled. So you don't have to worry about it enabling JIT twice. It only enables it twice if you restart the server. And the other thing about JIT is it stays active until the app is closed. As soon as you close the app, there is no more JIT. I can demonstrate that. Close Dolphin, reopen, it re-enables JIT. So as long as you keep the app in the background, it will keep JIT enabled. And you can go on cellular data. You can go on a different Wi-Fi. As long as JIT stays enabled, it'll stay enabled. But the issue is iOS can kill apps in the background randomly. So it's up to you to really make sure your apps stay enabled. You will have to consistently use them or find some way to keep them in your app switcher. With that being said, Windows is a bit bit inefficient when it comes to the tunnel. I don't know if you can hear it in the recording, but it is making my fan blast. Uh, I can actually even show Task Manager probably. As you can see, OBS is eating some CPU, but it's mostly the, the terminal where the tunnel task is that's eating the most CPU and such, and, and Firefox, I guess, but CP percentage is where we're looking. Here's the Python installation method on macOS. On macOS, you can go to python.org, download from here, or you can go to brew and install brew to then manage your Python. If you use brew, you can do brew install python. Um, otherwise, uh, do Python 3. Otherwise, you will just already have it if you install it from the website. And if you install it from the website, then you can do pip3 install dash dash upgrade just like Windows. Side jit server. And then to get it going on macOS. We will do side jit server. Oops, side jit server. We do sudo side jit server for macOS. Yours will ask for your password, probably, instead of touch ID. Um, and as you can see, my phone is currently plugged in, so it used a USB task. macOS is a lot more prone to using USB tasks if you are plugged in. I will say, I will recommend wait until you see this once on Mac OS and or Windows. Windows might do this the first time, but afterwards it should always use a Wi-Fi task. On Mac OS, you'll have to unplug from your device if you want wireless JIT. It's the same process on Mac OS. You will use this IP in your uh, in your shortcut on device. And as you can see, as soon as I unplugged, it disconnected from the USB and connected to the Wi-Fi tunnel. With that, we can now change the server that we are using to two, uh, minus two. And as you can see, the shortcut still works. Oh, if you start getting these types of errors where it says no route to host or something along those lines where it starts saying internal server error, 
Uh, especially if a device disconnected, what you will want to do is go to this IP address, and this will refresh the device list for SiteJIT server. And then, now, you should be able to enable JIT for your various apps fully wirelessly. And as you can see, there they go. As simple as that. There goes Pojav. Yep. There you go. And I will also comment that the Mac OS tunnel is a lot more efficient than the Windows tunnel. I'm not sure if I can show. It still eats CPU for sure, don't get me wrong. As you can see, OBS is eating the server a lot, uh, or eating the CPU, my bad. But it's also Python as well. You can kind of see it in here somewhere. Either way, with that being said, that should be about everything.